So let's look at a typical fund which people think does incredibly well and uh, show you some of the problems. This is their performance. Now I'm speaking to you at the end of December. So they've put their year-to-date performance to the end of November. They're up 8.5%. Their equities are up 12.1% and so forth. Now here's several problems already. First of all, the NASDAQ is up 55%. The S&P 500 is up 25% which means their equities have done half as well as the S&P 500. But there's a bigger problem. Overall, they've only done as quarter as well as the S&P 500, let alone, let alone the Nasdaq being up 55%. And the reason that 33% of their performance is shaved off from equities to what they've actually done is because they've got bonds and cash. And you might think, well, bonds and cash, nothing wrong with it. And of course, there isn't. So why have they underperformed so poorly? Well, one of the reasons is, and you can see their top 10 holdings at any given time, let's take Meta, up 250%. And you might say, well, they can't put all their money in just Meta. No, they sprayed and prayed a bit. But there's another problem. Last year, Meta was down 80%. And a company like this, a fund like this, will have suffered huge losses last year. And whilst they made some gains this year, they didn't make the 250% type gains because they would have got into Meta probably too late and too little. So what's a better approach? The better approach, of course, I'm going to advocate is you do it yourself. If you're monitoring once a fortnight for about 10 minutes your pension, making sure none of the stocks you pick falls more than 25% of the high since you've bought it, and only selecting those which tick the value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, and alpha boxes, then for the sake of 10 minutes every fortnight, you can definitely do better than these funds. Sorry.